These are difficult times and hoping you and your family stay safe. I'm Dr. Javier Quillo Olvera from Mexico. I'm a spinal neurosurgeon. And today I'm going to talk about the scope of the unilateral biportal endoscopic spinal surgery technique in lumbar degenerative pathology. Uh, I want to say thank you and blessings to all the participants. There are so many doctors abroad and there are experts in, in endoscopic spine surgery. So as introduction, uh, biportal endoscopic spinal surgery or the so-called UV technique is another one of the full endoscopic techniques in which the surgeon works with familiarity uh, through two ports. The technique can be performed in cervical, thoracic, lumbosacral spine for different pathologies. Uh, some pairs regarding UV are the following. For example, the surgeon can obtain clear visibility of the surgical field because UVE uses continuous saline irrigation, similar to uniportal technique. Also, UVE is a full endoscopic technique with high accuracy to reach the pathological target or reach the anatomical landmark. So the surgeon feels familiar using common surgical instruments, also used in open or microsurgical procedures. But uh, also, Another advantage is the, uh, the surgeon can be uh, feel free in the surgical field. Um, with the UVE, is the, there are minimal motion restriction in the surgical field since the endoscope can follow the instrument moving freely and an appropriate approach uh, performance ensures that. Also, the endoscopic anatomy is similar to microsurgery and a relatively short learning curve is needed. But uh, this advantage depends on proper execution of the triangular approach. The white portal technique is performed to two vectors. One vector is the endoscopic channel and the other vector is the working channel. So the two channels forms a triangle, but the surgeon works with the vertex of this tri triangle in a space called epiperiosteal space, the sun space. This space is filled with connective tissue or fat tissue. So the surgeon, working, the, the surgeon works uh, precisely below the muscles, not through the muscles, not into the muscles. The, the surgeon works below the muscles. So the muscle damage is minimum, similar to uniportal techniques. Uh, but the triangle base should be separate. Uh, that ensures that the uh, surgeon's not blocking during the surgery with the two instruments. And the surgeons make, make mistakes of not joining the two vectors, for example, or joining earlier the two vectors, leading in not adequate visualization in the surgical instruments. Uh, the endoscope used in UVE is an arthroscope, uh, different to the uh, endoscope with uh, working channel integrated in the uniportal techniques. There are so many brands, but general features include a four millimeters outer diameter with 30 and zero degrees angularity lens However, there are more angulations. Uh, there are so many surgical instruments, but the surgical instruments are this, the common surgical instruments used in open surgery. Uh, there are also local brands to perform uh, many instruments to make easier the surgery. We use carison forceps, pituitary forceps, some dissectors, different uh, RF groups with different tips, uh, drills, zero degrees um, uh, endoscope lens and 30 degrees and the other instruments, common instruments. The UVE technique has a special features also. The technique is performed through a triangular approach, as I told you, both the endoscoping and working channel join in the piperiosteal space, uh, the sun space, 
Then a positive hydrostatic pressure by the saline inflow works as a natural retractor the, to maintain a space for working. Uh, the same saline flow exits through the working channel. This is a circuit that ensures a proper approach. Uh, you can see, you can see, I'm sorry, in this video, you can see how the inflow of saline passes through the endoscopic channel and exits through the working channel. But another important feature in the UV technique is that UV techniques perform through a posterior, a posterior approaches. One of them is the paramedian approach. In the paramedian approach, you work in a triangle. This space is medial to the multifidus muscle. Here, you can approach the spine with minimal muscle damage. Here is the epiperiosteal space. Um, you have to keep in mind when you perform an uh, endoscopic spinal surgery through this uh, technique. The posterior paramedian approach to the lumbar spine addressed most of the central and lateral pathologies. There are uh, more lateral approaches to reach the foraminal area or extra foraminal approach called the uh, paraspinal approach. Uh, but however, most of the discernation and central subarticular stenosis can be treated by this approach. The paramedian approach here, the surgeon addressed with the vertex angle, with the vertex triangle, uh, the spinolaminar junction, um, since there the surgeons can reach the interlaminar space, the ipsilateral subarticular zone, uh, you can reach the contralateral side. Uh, and here, this is a picture that is taken immediately after the in initiated the approach that you can see how the spinous process is, the base of the spinous process and the uh, lamino spinous process junction. Also, through the paramedian approach, the contralateral side can be reached. We have two ways to do it. The first one is through the sublaminar approach and the other one is the translaminar approach. In these pictures, you can observe the progressive steps. How can I get the contralateral side through a sublaminar approach? This is the paramedian approach. And also, uh, the other approach is the paraspinal. The foraminal and extraforaminal pathology can be reached through this. The isthmus, lateral SIP, the proximal part of the superior or inferior transverse process are some of the bone landmarks to guide the approach, the paraspinal approach. Here in the peaks, uh, you can see common foraminal approach uh, to uh, transforaminal fusion to this biportal technique. In the intraoperative pictures, you can see the SIP. And after drilling the SIP, you can observe how we can reach more medial aspect of the spine through this paraspinal approach. But uh, we have to define if, if the UVE really is a true minimal invasive procedure. In Singapore in 2018, a group of experts define specific points that conforms the true minimal invasive procedure. That points are technology dependent techniques, less tissue damage, less systemic surg surgical stress and return to work activities earlier. Uh, when we talk about UVE, we need to know about the problems that could be solved by this technique. Disectomy is one of them and different articles have reported acceptable outcomes in comparison of UVE versus microdisectomy. They highlighted points like a similar operative time, lesser uh, estimated blood loss, and shorter hospital stays in UV patients. However, uh, clinical outcomes are similar, different only in the vast back postoperative score, which favors UVE. I show you an example of a 32 years old female uh, here in the superior panel uh, with a discernation in L5-S1 lumbar segment. The postoperative MRI at the 12 months shows good clinical results. Here in the video, we summarize the steps uh, to perform the disectomy. We perform a small laminotomy, and then we detach the cranial insertion of the ligamentum flavum. After, finally, we have control of the subarticular zone where the uh, disorganization is. And then we perform the disectomy as usually performed in open surgery, microsurgery, microsurgery also, we 
uh, try to, to damage minimum the uh, annular ligament to avoid reorniation. And then we have to observe, finally, the neural elements free. We have total control of the neural elements with this technique. Another degenerative condition addressed by UVE is the lumbar spinal stenosis, but many articles have focused on this topic. Here the authors uh, found that dural expansion after decompression was similar in the UVE and microsurgical technique, but the only uh, aspect that is different compared with microsurgery also is the bass back postoperative score. Uh, in this slide, I show you the case of a 67 years old female uh, male with two stenosis levels at L3, L4 here and L4, L5. That levels were decompressed successfully with the UVE technique. Uh, we used the ULBD UVE technique. We perform bilateral decompression through a unilateral approach. And here in the demonstrative video, we summarize also the, the process. We perform uh, laminotomy, ipsilateral laminotomy. Then we perform uh, the drilling of the base of the spinal process because it's blocking to pass the contralateral side and through a sublaminar approach, we can reach the superior aspect of the SIP medially. And then after uh, reach the cranial insertion of the ligamentum flavum, we can start to the flavectomy. We use only always the flavum as a protector of the neural elements. You can see in the video, how the neural elements uh, get released after decompression. We perform the contralateral side decompression. And then we observe finally both neural elements, both sides decompressed. Recently, different ways to assist the lumbar fusion procedures with endoscopy have been reported uh, in uniportal techniques and then also in in biportal uh, techniques. However, through the UVE, through the biportal technique, it is possible not only assist the process of fusion, we can observe and all the process and hold the process of fusion during the surgery. The endoscope lets the surgeon decompress the nerves directly, prepare the end, pl end plates properly, put the graphene and the interbody device, inter device uh, properly also. Here, the authors uh, have highlighted, for example, reduced bleeding, complications, postoperative pain, extensive bone decompression, and plate preparation regarding the use of the UV transfer aminal lumbar fusion. In this case, a 50 years, uh, 52 years old female with a spondy grade two underwent a UV transfer aminal fusion. Uh, direct decompression was uh, reached at the final of the procedure. And if you see the video, you have total control of the anatomical elements. You, have, you can see the traversing nerves, and then you can work exactly the, the coming triangle. Here is the city nerve, here is the traversing nerve, this is the disc, this is right. the patient. Then we perform whole uh, disectomy. We use different uh, raspers, raspers. Uh, also, we use different curates to prepare properly the end plates. You can see the end plates uh, correctly prepared. Then the fusion is, the fusion is like an open surgery. We use different uh, tips to restore the height of the intervertebral space. We put the graph. We put the cage always on the direct visualization to take care of the neural element. How many articles have addressed also another point? For example, a short learning curve is needed to perform the UVE technique. The changes in the muscles, the, the multifidus muscles, can be. Uh, but the changes are reversible. I think other person is talking. I'm sorry. Uh, and also, the UV, you have you you have rapid recovery after the procedure. 
As a conclusion, disectomy, neural decompression, and lumbar spine stenosis, and recently endoscopic lumbar fusion are the UVE techniques scope. The related advantages are all of those associated with minimal invasive procedures, in addition to clear visualization and high accuracy. The learning curve for conventional procedures can be short but requires repetition, but the UVE procedure is a technique that is slowly emerging as another option in the full endoscopy portfolio. Thank you very much. Sorry. Malcolm. Um, yeah. yeah. Javier, a wonderful presentation by you. Excellently demonstrated. Covered all the basic aspects of UB and also demonstrated a little bit about fusion and plate preparations. So, fantastic talk, all in all. Really appreciate what you've been doing and uh, really appreciate my master for having taught you so well. <laughs> so, all in all, fantastic. <laughs>